Welcome into the Jamie Chabwell Show presented by Hendrick Toyota. Kevin O'Rourke alongside the head coach of the Bucks, and for Jamie and CSU, a 4-0 start as they defeated Norfolk State 20-12 in a big test this week as they head up to Boone, North Carolina to take on Appalachian State. But Jamie, first, we talked about how we thought it was going to be a defensive struggle. It certainly was that. You forced four turnovers and just a huge play by Dylan Black helps clinch the win. Yeah, it was, it was a tough physical game, exactly what you talked about going up there and uh, uh, really proud that uh, we were able to come out on top. I thought our defense played real well. Offensively, we had some spurts where we got enough points on the board, and, and there at the end of the game, Dylan getting a sack, four slow man recovering for a touchdown, and a spike for that matter, <laughs> spiked it in the end zone. Huge play to give us, uh, you know, give us a give us the lead there, and uh, please coming back being four zero. Second straight week that your defense held the opponent without a third down conversion, but more so the four turnovers. You guys continue to get it done in that department and just come up with big plays at big times. Which is which is important. We talked about that early on that uh, sometimes you just got to be able to make a play. And uh, the times that we did get the turnovers were, were huge because a couple of them they were driving and, and moving it on our defense. But anytime you can hold a team on third down and them not getting any third downs, you should have a chance to win, which we did. Uh, thankfully for us, on, you know, offensively, we're not turning the ball over um, and uh, we're not giving opponents short field. So I think anytime you're not turning it over, defense is getting turnovers, you got a chance to be successful and uh, we're finding a way every week to do that. Bucks found a way on Saturday, defeating Norfolk State 20 to 12. We'll take a look at some first half highlights. The CSU made the nearly seven hour trip up to Norfolk, Virginia. And we talked about Norfolk State's defense, top five in the country in total defense the last two years. And found out early just how good their defense was. Yeah, they were, um, you know, we're looking at the video, you're thinking, man, these guys look pretty good. And then you see them up live and in color. Uh, they were impressive. I thought we got off to a great start. You know, Troy gives us uh, another burst off of special teams, gets the ball, gets a great return, gets us out past midfield. We got a chance to uh, really get something going early. Uh, and uh, we get, us, get ourselves in a situation where we uh, have a chance to make a first down where I think we end up getting in a third and short. Uh, after uh, you know, after two plays, and have a chance to continue moving the ball, and we just don't execute on the perimeter, uh, have a miss assignment on a blocking assignment, and you have to end up punting the ball, which is disappointing after that type of uh, field position. Defense comes out, they get the ball back, and defense uh, gets after the quarterback. As you can see here, Calvin Bryant forcing a fumble. Caleb Bachelor, freshman, forced defensive lineman, gets this other great field position here after after the fumble. Uh, we, we wanted to bring pressure. They weren't comfortable with who they were playing at quarterback, so that was our game plan going in. We're going to try to make him uh, feel as much uncomfortable as possible, and our defense did that. Uh, but great recovery there by Caleb. So we're, we get the ball back in really good position, have a chance to uh, do some things and make some big plays. See Malcolm running, uh, getting some good yardage for us, getting this ball down there where we feel like we're uh, uh, in good position to take some shots and do some things. Then we give up a, a sack here that really puts us behind. We go from first and 10 to second and whatever, 17, and then we have some penalties, and then they, uh, they make a couple plays on us to back us up even farther. So a, a promising drive ends up being uh, nothing. Norfolk State gained the football back, kind of a lucky bounce of the football, almost another turnover here, and once again, it was Calvin Bryan who got in the backfield. Yeah, Calvin came off the edge a couple times there, and it was uh, he fumbled and it went right to that thing running back, and thought we might have had a touchdown or a chance at a safety there, but we have them backed up. Defense is doing a good job, gets us Gets his good field position again. Uh, we go back to trying to work on their defense. One thing that uh, we didn't really take advantage of a lot of the turnovers early, but the thing it did do is it kept their defense out there quite a bit. And so they had to play a lot of minutes, and I think it wore on them eventually. Talk about how big that defense is up front, 290 pretty much across that three-man front. So being out there on the field, tire them down a little bit. That's part of it. You hope happens uh, and being out there. Here you see a good drive they got going here after um, – um, forcing another punt from us. Complete a pass. They're moving up the field. Turnover. Huge play. You know, they've, they've drove from being backed up and going, and we get a chance to get a turnover, which was big. Then we start executing, getting down the field, making some plays. Um, you know, start, Malcolm starts making some good reads, good decisions in our, in our, in our uh, pitch phase. Ben Robinson uh, really got going in this game. Uh, we got him on the perimeter doing some things. and. Um, you can see coming back now, defense back out there, um, trying to force some plays, making a punt. Christian doing his thing up inside. Um, they really did a good job. He had some solid yards, but they did a good job of really forcing us trying to go outside. Um, Colton usually seems like he catches one or two every game for a first down there. Uh, did that as well. And then we get a great, great run here by Ben. Uh, Nathan Prater does an ex excellent job setting it up. We get inside the two-yard line. And I was really happy to see uh, you know Ben get outside, 
uh, let him use his speed. It's something that we've not, because of what teams have done to us, they've made us really run more up inside and give him a chance to get outside has been good. And then finally, see him get a little touchdown here. He, he's been always getting us down there, never gets a touchdown. I'm glad to see him get on the board. And uh, we did a good job of blocking and, and getting him in the end zone right there. Ben Robinson, the freshman from Tallahassee, first touchdown of his collegiate career, 98 yards, a career high, and had that 39-yarder to start that drive where it looked like he was bottled up and then out of nowhere got outside. Yeah, it was a, it was a heck of a run. Uh, it was uh, He made about four guys miss, and he's so small anyway, he's just able to uh, – his balance is tremendous, and it was a great run. We get a defense back out there, and uh, after getting a lead, you know, feel good about where we're heading. We figured, think we figured them out. Um, I think the drive right before half, their you know their quarterback starts making some plays. They try to get him outside the pocket because we're we're doing some more things. We finally get a stop. Uh, we're coming back. There's big number seven. He was a, we talked about him all week. The transfer. He was a good player. Did a lot of things. Caused us some caused us some issues by far. Here's Malcolm scrambling on a third and long. Gets us a, does a great decision. Gets us a first down. Now we have a chance to make some other plays and then the, and we get in a third down situation and, and their speed off the edge gets us in a sack, which uh, pins us back. In Norfolk State, you mentioned that drive before halftime, able to get on the board, hits a big pass play there, and then they're running back, the Boston College transfer, Finch, he had a couple of good runs on this drive as well. He did. I think they, you know, they, they, uh, they spread us out a little bit and then really tried to get him going as far as uh, get him outside, let him use his speed, uh, and, uh, and then got the quarterback doing some different things. And we had them on a couple situations, but they, on a third down and some fourth downs, but they made some nice plays uh, to get him uh, get 22 the football, and I thought we did a great job down here on the goal line when they're they're first and go from the four. Uh, we we stuff them for uh, I think it was three straight plays right. and uh, have a chance there on fourth down to uh, keep them out. And to their credit, they do a good job of of um, you know making a play and, and hitting the fullback in the end zone there. I thought we had a chance at him, and but they make a play. It's I th you know it's seven. You think it's going to be seven seven, but I think this was a pivotal point of the game right here. This ended up turning the game I think in our favor. Uh, our guys kept playing, get a block to extra point, makes it 7-6. You don't think one point's a big deal, but it ended up being a huge deal going on in the second half. Damian Dixon comes off the edge untouched and gets the block. Troy McGowan, second straight week with that big kick return we saw, and certainly special teams can give you a lift in a close game. They can. I thought, I felt especially the first half, I mean, uh, with our punt return, we had really good field position. We didn't take advantage of it, but uh, I thought our special teams made some plays for us to give us a chance to be successful. And we talked about that's the that's the thing that we needed to improve is uh, our special teams have done a good job, but we needed some game changing moments, some things that really made a difference. And I thought we did that there in the first half. So CSU leading seven to six at halftime. Bucks would have a tough test in the second half as well. We'll take a look at some second half highlights after this. You're watching the Jamie Chadwell Show, sponsored by Hendrick Toyota. Now a drop and throw under pressure. Now steps up, throwing middle pass caught by Nathan Prater. And he's in for the touchdown. Malcolm Dixon to Nathan Prater, the tight end, the 25-yard touchdown grab. Generously appointed. Jaw-dropping value. Limited number available. Discover it at Hendrick Toyota of North Charleston. Introducing the Hendrick Limited Edition Toyota Camry. Leather, custom alloy wheels, powerful and efficient, 35 MPGs, automatic transmission, 10 airbags, display audio with six speakers, and all for $19,990. Plus, double up with four years maintenance and receive Hendrick's nationwide lifetime warranty included. The Hendrick Limited Edition Toyota Camry. Race into Hendrick Toyota of North Charleston. Welcome back for the second segment of the Jamie Chadwell Show, presented by Hendrick Toyota. The Bucks leading Norfolk State on Saturday, 7-6 to six at the half, and Norfolk State gets the ball at a halftime, and you, your defense just continued to do an outstanding job of making plays after halftime. They did. Uh, you know, they got that, got that drive right there before half, but I think our defense uh, made a couple of mistakes uh, that they talked about they fixed at halftime, and, and we knew that uh, um, going into the second half that uh, they were going to make some adjustments. We would have to hopefully, on offense, control the clock, Try to find a way to score, not beat ourselves, uh, and then come out and let our defense, uh, you know, make some plays because our defense felt really good about their plan. And, and with them rotating quarterbacks, trying to find the right one, we felt like we had them in a good position and uh, wanted to go out and, and uh, create some separation so we can play a little bit more aggressive and not be in a tight ball game. And that was our plan going in. So Charleston Southern on top, seven to six at halftime. We'll take a look at some second half highlights as the Bucks improved to four and zero with a twenty to twelve win over Norfolk State. Norfolk gets the ball to halftime, and like we talked about, your defense 
coming into the game probably knew that it was going to be a game where they'd have to perform well, and they did just that. They did. Um, you know, we, we, we talked about as you're looking at video, you see the other opponents and see what their strengths are. And going in, we felt like, hey, it was going to be a defensive, uh, you know, battle. And our defense came out a little disappointed in our, our start and field position off the kickoff. I think we gave them some good field position because um, we really wanted to talk about a challenge in the field goal position, or the, not the field goal, but the pos uh, position off of kickoffs. Uh, but our defense uh, held them, gave us the chance to get the ball back, and we're going back trying to grind it again and make some plays uh, to see if we can um, end up punting again. You know, don't get a, don't do anything on offense. They get the ball back with a short field. You can see on their other side of the 50. Uh, and so right now, you know, they're they're doing some things where they're putting us in a situation where we, we're losing the field position battle, which is not good. Defense comes up with a huge play here on a sack uh, from the backside. This is James Smith. Uh, did a huge job right there making a play for us, forcing them to punt. We get the ball on the five yard line. So we're backed up, they're probably feeling good. And we knew, you know, on the sideline, we talked about guys, we gotta get a drive here. So we get Christian going up, up in the middle. Um, we go to a bread and butter play here off of a fake reverse. Uh, Kirby Broom makes a great play, uh, makes a, just a huge catch to get us out, get us inside where we have a chance to really start opening up a little bit. We go back to pounding Christian inside. We felt like uh, we had some things on those guys uh, and um, wanted to try to exploit it. Got ourselves in a couple third down situations and uh, were able to get them on these drives where we, had, we didn't have success earlier. And uh, that allowed us to get us, give, us, give us a chance to uh, make some plays. Here, number seven makes another good play on us there. Uh, Malcolm thought he had him. Uh, puts us in a second and long. Thought this was obviously a big play to get a touchdown. The thing that I was pleased with more than anything is Malcolm, uh, he's feeling some pressure. Typically, what he's done previously in the game is he stepped up and ran. This time, he kept his eyes downfield. It's hard to miss six, seven tight end, and, and Nathan does a great job of getting in the end zone there. Uh, gives us a lead, 14 to six, and, and we got some momentum back after a 95-yard drive. We ate the clock. Our defense is rested. We go down. We get a great kickoff. We pin them inside the 20-yard line. So things that we talked about at halftime, we feel like it's coming to fruition. Hey, we've got them backed up. Now we got to learn how to finish them. Um, we we force them into a a punt here, a punt situation, and um, off, off of a third down. And uh, defense makes another good plays and, and almost should have had a pick right there. We about get the ball back right there. We get the ball in really good field position. Uh, we're driving. We got a chance to, uh, you know, we feel like put them away. We made some good plays. We get ourselves in another uh, third down situation where we have to pass a third long. Malcolm comes out, has a guy, Christian, or not Christian, Alex Cruz is open off a crossing route and he just misses him. We get a turnover and it completely changes the field position, changes everything. Uh, and then they go to work and uh, we're right back into a battle again where we had a chance to go up. We felt like at least two scores, you know, maybe two touchdowns. Uh, and then the turnover kills us because it gave them momentum back and uh, gives them some, uh, you know, confidence. They got the ball back and new quarterback in and trying to do some things. Tyler Clark coming off the bench for Norfolk State and gave him a bit of a spark with his ability to throw the ball. Tight end Joseph Hawkins makes a couple of plays and then your guys coming up here able to get a third turnover, kind of fortunate, but take advantage by recovering the fumbled snap. Yeah, they were they were driving. You know, they had a they had a play coming and the ball just the quarterback just drops the ball and it was huge at that time because they I think they you know they had us a little tired and we had to try to go back to work offensively, milk the clock again, and hopefully uh, change, try to change some field position and uh, we get a little drive going. Uh, they, their defense obviously bows up and makes some plays on us. We, um, we have a chance here at a first down. We just slightly overthrow Larry Jones on a corner route. Uh, we had some guys open, you know, and we just missed them. And we got to make those plays uh, if we want to continue to, to win here. Defense does a great job of getting after the quarterback, um, you know, swarming that guy. Thought he did. You mentioned him giving a burst. He did a good job coming in and giving them a spark. Uh, I thought number 80 for them was a really good player. They looked for him a lot. But this quarterback came in and just did some good things with uh, trying to get the ball out quick and, and uh, making some plays. And they went to a quick passing game. And um, here they bust us on a draw, got some good play, got some good yardage. And they just had a little drive, a drive, a drive. I thought they were, they were helped on this drive. I don't know if we'll show it or not with that, uh, they called a targeting penalty on us. And that gave them a first down where it, it looked like it was, uh, you know, would have been a third long for us. But they get a touchdown. It's 14 to 12. This is where that extra point in the first half really comes into effect. They got to go for two. Uh, you can see their quarterback makes a nice throw right there into the end zone. So now they're feeling great about themselves. We get a huge play on the two point. Uh, Matt Hardy comes off the edge, allows them not to um, get it. So we go back now. It's 14 12 with about, I don't know, six, seven minutes to go. 
Uh, we need to go score, or at worst, we've got to go down and milk some clock as much as possible and, and try to change the field position. And uh, we get ourselves in a third and short, don't execute it, but we're able to punt, back them up. And now they've got to drive the distance to try to attempt the field goal. Uh, and then uh, Will Hunt gets great pressure, makes the quarterback step up, and then Dylan Black makes an unbelievable play, stripping the ball and getting a touchdown, uh, puts us up 20 to 12, and now you know we're in a good position to win the game. And then. Um, it was just a great individual play, first by Will making him step up, and then Dylan not only tackling him, but stripping the football, and then getting on in the end zone, uh, you know, to give us the touchdown and uh, give us the breathing room we need to be successful. Norfolk State will get the ball back once more, but you guys hold on for the 20 to 12 win, and that probably definitely the play of the game, possibly the play of the season by Dylan Black. And we talked about last week or preceding weeks about how Will Hunt gets a lot of the attention, but Dylan's really had a great start to his season. He has. Dylan's been tremendous, and he goes. As you, as you mentioned, probably overlooked because of Will, and then even James Smith, you know, gets a lot of notoriety. But Dylan's one of those guys that doesn't say much, shows up every day, and um, I think every week he's gotten better and better. And it showed this this past week. The first couple of weeks he has to be unselfish. He's tackling that dive all the time. Now when he has a chance to pass rush and do some things, his ability is shining through. And uh, happy for him and the success he's had. Your defensive coordinator, Chad Staggs, you guys like to call your defense Blue Swarm, and I think we saw it a lot there. A lot of gang tackling. It just seems like they're doing a great job getting to the football as a group. They are. We've uh, Every day our, de our defensive coaches preach, attack the football, attack the football, get the football out, but we need all 11 in that picture on that video. We need 11 around. And when that happens, you got guys doing that. It just creates, it creates that sense of urgency that you want on the defensive side. Defense is about effort and intensity and hustle, and our, and our guys are playing that way and they're buying into what we're doing. And, it's shown these four weeks. And then on the offensive side of the ball, you struggled for most of the day, but found a way to get two big drives. Malcolm makes a couple of big throws. Talked about that play to Prater. He struggled for most of the day, but steps up and makes a big play, and that's what you want out of your senior quarterback. Yeah, he did. I mean, you'd love for him to make some of those throws to give us the breathing room we need to, but uh, when we needed a couple plays to be made, um, he made them, and I think that's where his experiences came in. He, he didn't have his best game by far, but when, when we needed we needed something, uh, he was able to find it, and, and that goes overlooked sometimes, but that's big, you know, and the thing that uh, we'd love to obviously be scoring some more points and being more consistent, but we're playing against some good teams too that understand what they're doing, um, but I think you'll see us continue to improve because we, we, we're learning as we're going, but we're not making mistakes that are killing our team. We're not turning the ball over on a pick six or giving other points, which um, that's one of the big reasons where we're at because of the turnover differential. You know, defense is getting turnovers, we're not giving them up. That gives us a chance to milk that clock and do some things. So uh, Malcolm's going to continue to improve, and uh, the guys around him are continuing to improve. We're still uh, learning those new guys that came back for us in week three. They're still learning things, and so it's still a work in progress. But uh, feel good about where we're headed. So CSU 4-0 for the second time in program history. Big challenge for the Bucks this week as they head up to Boone, North Carolina, and take on Appalachian State. We'll take a look at that game after this. You're watching the Jamie Chadwell Show, sponsored by Hendrick Toyota. Clark backs up inside his own five, under pressure. Will Hunt can't get him, but Dylan Black, Kenny strips the football. Black has it, touchdown Charleston Southern. Dylan Black with the strip sack. He falls on in the end zone, and it's CSU 20, Norfolk State 12, with 3.04 to go in the game. Generously appointed, jaw-dropping value, limited number available. Discover it at Hendrick Toyota of North Charleston. Introducing the Hendrick Limited Edition Toyota Camry. Leather, custom alloy wheels, powerful and efficient, 35 MPGs, automatic transmission, 10 airbags, display audio with six speakers, and all for $19,990. Plus, double up with four years maintenance and receive Hendrick's nationwide lifetime warranty included. The Hendrick Limited Edition Toyota Camry. Race into Hendrick Toyota of North Charleston. Uh, found a way to win again, 4-0. Yeah, uh, outstanding. It was a tough game. We, we, we talked about it was going to be a defensive struggle. It was. Uh, we were able to, uh, you know, find a way to get enough points on the board and, and play some field position football there at the end. And um, defense made a great play to get the touchdown. Dylan Black made an unbelievable play there at the end of the game. And um, excited about going back 4-0. This will make the trip home a, a lot nicer. You guys forced four turnovers. It just seems like the defense keeps coming up with the big plays when they need them. Yeah, huge. Uh, you know, we got – they drove there in the second half, had the ball down here, had a had a chance, and we made you know get a fumble, get a pick. Um, I thought our special teams did some good things, you know, and put us in position, especially in the first half, to really take control of the game. And uh, to their credit, you know, their defense played really well. But um, when, anytime you get four turnovers in a game, you should win the game, and uh, thankfully we did. How much do you think the belief and confidence is playing into your success so far? I, I think it's huge uh, because uh, you know we've never said that we're a complete football team. We're a work in progress, but when 
Um, kids, young people, believe in the cause, uh, believe in each other, love each other, and plan for each other. Good things happen. Uh, whether you're whether you're a, a good football team or a great football team, or you're just trying to get there, uh, belief is a powerful thing. And uh, you know, all things through Christ are possible, and that's what we're trying to do every day. Man, that's awesome. I don't I don't remember the last time I've done that, and uh, just. I was so excited at the time. Uh, I didn't even realize. I, I'm, I think I threw the ball up, and Coach got a little mad at me. But I was, I was pumped, to say the least. You guys have really come up with some big plays the first four games of the season. How much confidence do you have as a defense? Man, our defense has been awesome. Um, we need to make big plays. We've made big plays, and that's kind of carried over the whole mentality. Whenever we go out there, it's a, it's a sudden change. We're, we know we're going to get the ball back, so it's awesome. How much has Coach Chadwell and Coach Staggs kind of helped that confidence, foster that confidence? Well, I think from the beginning, the, uh, just the excitement that coaches have shown, um, and the guys have really bought in, and just, you know, all practice, uh, coaches are always emphasizing getting the ball out, so we just definitely made a point of that this week. Welcome back for the final segment of the Jamie Chadwell Show, sponsored by Hendrick Toyota, Kevin O'Rourke alongside the head coach of the Bucks. CSU heading up to App State this Saturday, and it'll certainly be a test against an App State team, which has made the playoffs eight years in a row, struggling at one and two, but a couple of really good opponents in number seven Montana and a good North Carolina A&T team. What kind of test will it be for your group? A huge test, obviously. The uh, Not only the, the program that they have that built, the tradition they have, going to play in front of a great crowd up there. Uh, Athleticism-wise, the speed that they'll, they'll present us is going to be a huge challenge for uh, our guys. Uh, and, um, you know, the thing that we've talked about all week is our guys know who they are. They know their tradition. They know they beat Michigan whenever it was. But what we talk about constantly is it's this year. It's, it's us versus them this year, not 2007, not 2010, not 2011. So I think our guys will be excited about doing it because they know the recognition that App State has and, and to show how much our program's improved. So uh, it's going to be the biggest challenge we face so far uh, this year. Uh, but uh, our guys are excited about going up there and, and approaching them. App State got their first win of the season last week, defeating Elon 31-21. Take a look at some highlights from that game. They were led by a couple of freshmen, Marcus Cox, the running back, over 300 yards of total offense and three touchdowns. You see him catch a pass out of the backfield here. Yeah, he was, uh, um, you know, multi-talented. You know, you run a back wise, a guy can catch it out of the backfield, can, you can hand it off. He's, he's very explosive. Uh, the quarterbacks do really well. They play at a high tempo, which is a, a challenge for our defense. And then with them defensively, they've got a lot of young guys uh, that they're playing, they're trying to implement. They've got a new coaching staff, uh, defensive-wise, new scheme, but they play it really well. They, um, they're very aggressive and it present a challenge for us just because of the athleticism they have all, in all phases of the linebackers and, and the defensive backs. So um, we're excited about going up there and representing the Big South versus a, you know, a SOCON member or, or a Sun Belt, new Sun Belt member, whatever they are now. But um, it'll, be, uh, it'll be a fun, fun game. App State with a first-year head coach and Scott Satterfield moving to FBS, the Sun Belt Conference lot next year. They were up big in this game, then Elon came back on them. Defensively, you mentioned they're very young. How, how do you attack them as an offense? Well, um, the thing that we've got to try to do is we can't let them um, we can't let them dictate tempo to us. You know, being aggressive. They like to be aggressive, very similar to our defense, and so we've got to make sure we put ourselves in formations. Um, that we can control how they're going to line and make them defend what we do. Uh, if, we, if we allow them to be aggressive and sit back and attack us with the looks they like, it's going to be a long day. So we've got to uh, try to cut the game down a little bit, get them where they're thinking more though than reacting, and uh, give us a chance. Then you mentioned offensively, they're going to spread you out. They have two quarterbacks and a bevy of receivers led by Sean Price, who was freshman All-American last year. Uh, we talked about the depth in your secondary, and that will certainly be tested this week, I guess. Yeah, our biggest test, no doubt, for our secondary and, and our guys back there because they do they can bring receivers at you at ways, running backs at ways, and the quarterbacks can really can throw in and run. So um, the challenge for us is we've got to find a way to get to the quarterback with our, our blitzes, try to make him throw the ball up, and, and maybe throw not on the time he wants to. Uh, and so uh, it's going to be a, um, for our defense as far as just the tempo they use and the speed they have on the perimeter best challenge that they've seen this far. So CSU heads up to one of the premier sites in all of FCS football, Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. Kickoff at 3.30 as the Bucks try to go 5-0. For Jamie Chadwell, my name is Kevin O'Rourke. Thanks for watching the Jamie Chadwell Show, sponsored by Hendrick Toyota.